Hey guys, assalamualaikum. Welcome back to another virtual lecture. In today's video, we're going to look at several problems, criticisms, as well as complications of enacting the fiscal policy. Now, there are several, and the first one we should look at problems of timing. Now, you may recall of our business cycle, right? So we have several phases in the business cycle. Here's the peak. Here's recession. Here's the trough, and here's the recovery phase. And of course, we'll go back to another round of peak, recession, trough, and another recovery phase. Say at the moment, we have a problem of inflation, which normally happens here during the peak phase. Now, what would the government do during an inflation? Okay, so normally, the government would implement a contractionary fiscal policy. But what happens is sometimes the contraction of fiscal policy may only come into effect once the economy has settled and gone into recession. Okay, so when that happens, okay, the contraction of fiscal policy may only deepen the recession further, right? Likewise, say the economy is experiencing a recession. Okay, so the government would naturally implement an expansionary fiscal policy to solve this problem. However, the expansion of fiscal policy may only come into effect once the economy has already recovered and experiencing a boom. So what that happens is that expansion of fiscal policy would just lead to overheating and even more inflation than necessary. So what are the causes of these lags in fiscal policy? Well, there are several. One is known as the recognition lag. Now, since business cycles can be irregular, governments may be unwilling to take action until they are so convinced, so sure that the problem is serious. So I guess by the time that the government is convinced that the problem is serious enough and only start to recognize the problem, the problem may in fact start to settle on its own. The second lag is the administration or administrative lag. Okay, so this is basically the time uh, taken between when action is taken and when fiscal policy is needed. Okay, the government cannot change spending and tax overnight, so they do need planning. So I guess that sort of admin work involves a bit of lag. And the third lag is the operational lag. Okay, so this is basically the time between changes in fiscal policy and the effects that it would have on income, um, price as well as employment. Okay, so taking all together, all of these lags which just contribute to the problems of timing of fiscal policy. Let's take a look at the second problem of fiscal policy, which is known as the crowding out effect. Now here, let me just sketch a simple aggregate demand and aggregate supply curve first, okay? So this is ED1 and AS, okay? Right. So let's say there's a problem of a recession. So remember what happens when there's a recession? Aggregate demand curve shifts to the left, right? So this is the problem. So here we need two. Okay. So before, okay, this was our original price level and this is our GDP level. Okay, now with a recession, remember with a ratchet effect, the price level remains at P1, but now we have a lower GDP. Okay, so basically this was our problem with a recession. Okay, so naturally with the recession, the government will react and adopt an expansionary fiscal policy, correct? So what that means is the government would increase the aggregate demand curve back to the original position. Okay, so remember AD here, a component of AD is the aggregate expenditure, right? Which is C, I, G, G, and XN. So the government may opt to increase government spending. Remember? So increasing government spending here, that is a fiscal policy, right? Expansionary fiscal policy. Let me just write it down somewhere. Increase G. Therefore, increasing AD. When the government increases government spending in relation to the unchanged tax revenues, we know now that there is budget deficit. 
So the government has several options to finance that deficit, right? One way is to borrow from individuals as well as firms. Now, when the government borrows, it is effectively competing against the private sectors as well for finance and for funds. So remember now, there's more demand for finance compared to the supply of finance. Therefore, it will increase the interest rate. Okay, so we know that the interest rates is one of the determinants of investments as well as um, borrowings. Okay, so when there's an increase in interest rates, IG and C will possibly be reduced because interest rate is a, is a cost of borrowing. So what happens here is, although initially aggregate demand curve may shift back to the original, but because this other uh, components of aggregate demand falls, the effect would basically weaken the expansionary fiscal policy. So AD would not be 81, rather it would be maybe somewhere here. This would be the final uh, aggregate demand curve, okay? So in other words, to keep it simple, aggregate demand curve would not go back to the original aggregate demand one, but it will just stop up to here. Okay, so this is what it means by the crowding out effect. What it means is, um, an increase in interest rates would crowd out some of the investments. When the government implements fiscal policy, more of the effects are based on predictions or forecasts. So therein lies the third problem of fiscal policy, which is the accuracy of these predictions. For instance, there's a problem of inflation. Okay, so when inflation happens, naturally the government would implement a contractionary fiscal policy. One of the tools of contractionary fiscal policy is to increase taxation, right? So in theory, when taxation increases, it will lead to a fall in disposable income, which will also lead to a fall in consumption, as well as a fall in savings. But more so, this would be the, the aim, right? But in practice, it is not that easy to predict how much people would actually cut their spending how much people actually cut their savings. Okay, so it depends on perception or whether the changes in taxes is temporary or permanent. So because of this, since the government is really not sure how effective uh, this prediction is, that would be the problem of a fiscal policy. Okay, and besides that, it's also very difficult to predict the size of the multiplier. There are also other side effects of fiscal policy, such as cost inflation, and welfare and distribution effect. What does it mean by cost inflation? Say the economy is experiencing very high inflation or somehow the economy is overheating, okay? So the government would implement a contractionary fiscal policy, which is either to uh, reduce G or increase T, okay? Say the government increases T, okay? So what that happens is when taxation is increased, okay, the point is to actually reduce consumption, right, to cool down the economy. But then that, what that means is the cost is being passed to consumers in the form of high prices. Alternatively, when there's an inflation, the government may opt for the second tool of fiscal policy, which is to reduce G, right? However, when this happens, it might take a toll on the needs of the poor or those less fortunate because the needy might really depend on government spending. So if the government reduces government spending, there might be a fall in health care and education. So that would be a welfare and distribution effect.